Okay. Hello, everyone. We have hi. <laughs> we have a guest today. Here, come on, come on in the frame. Um, welcome to CEO Check In. Adrian has been helping me set up for these CEO lives or see what are these called? CEO Check In from day one. What do you usually do when you help me get set up? Uh, I set up the light, the microphone, the mini light, the one that goes bop 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 bop. We'll show all that off. That's right. So if you're uh, sheltering at home with your kids, you know that they've now been conscripted into being set up for shoots. My older son is doing IT help. So thank you so much for all no your problem. help. He also uh -huh. has been late to math class several times because of me being on CEO check-in. So thank you for that. And so I have a question for you, Adrian. Okay. Which is what are a couple of things that you will remember from this time? Because we were actually getting a little nostalgic. I'm moving back to New York on Sunday. And so next week this time, he will be here without me. Um, we're going to see each other a week later, but you're going to have a week without me. So what, what are some things you're going to remember from this crazy time where we're um, all sheltering in place? I think I'm going to remember the feeling. You look over there. Sorry. I think I'm <laughs> going to remember the feeling of not, like, backing down. Because there's a lot coming at us with coronavirus and all this stuff. And I think... I'm going to remember the feeling of getting ready for the world when the time comes of being free. So, yeah. what, do, what do you mean by not backing down? Like, I'm thinking of you going on those bike rides. Adrian's been going on these bike rides that are, like, really challenging. It's very hilly around here. And I was saying that's actually really good practice for, like, doing hard things, right? Because you can, like, train your body to do hard things, and you've been doing that. So what do you mean by not backing down? I'm thinking of your bike rides. What were you thinking of? Well, I was thinking of after coronavirus, we could all just be like, no, we're going to stay at home and watch Netflix more. But I feel that, um, or at least everyone around me has the mindset that once coronavirus ends, we need to get back out there and we need to stay strong because it's going to be hard, but we can do it. That's awesome. Thank you. What's one thing you want to do when, when we can get back out there? Uh, What's something you're missing? Go to lunch with friends and eating dim sum. Woo woo! <laughs> lunch with friends and dim sum. All right, that'll be first on the list when we get to go back out. Thank you for all your help you, setting up. Love you, honey. See you bye, guys. Thank you. All right, that was a little shout out to my son, Adrian, who has been helping with all of these CEO check-ins. In fact, both of my kids have been amazing and my mother letting me take over and, you know, twice a week, it was three times a week, now twice a week, taking over the living room, setting up all my lighting equipment and my sound equipment. Um, so anyway, no thank you, mom. No <laughs> um, all right. So I'm really excited for today. We have a whole bunch of great guests on here, including B, who just joined Million Dollar Women Masterclass, Bianca, who just joined Million Dollar Women Masterclass this morning. Great to have you with us. Rabia, who's in my Thrive program and Masterclass. So you guys can also follow up in our Facebook group where you all are. And hi, Marianne Keyline um, and ASDMF5. Great to see you guys. So let's start with a little mindset coaching today. I feel like it's important today to talk about abundance mindset. Because even in normal times, we can all fall into scarcity mindset by mistake, right? And scarcity mindset is when you start thinking, oh my God, what if my business never comes back? Or, you know, no one has any money right now. How am I going to ever charge my full prices again? Or, um, you know, it's a pandemic now. My business might go under, right? This is all scarcity thinking. And I want you to know the difference between scarcity thinking and abundance thinking, because the best thing you can do when this kind of thinking pops up is to name it out loud. Literally pause, or maybe you can train someone you know well, like a family member, to call you on it, right? And just say, hey, wait, this is scarcity thinking. Let me just stop this. Uh, Vern Harnish, who is one of my board members and who taught at our Million Dollar Women Summit, made a great point at our summit, which is that even though the economy is down by some 25%, which is a big number, right? And unemployment's at an all-time high and all the terrible things we see in the news, still, this is the best economy that we have had in hundreds of years. There is still so much opportunity out there. There are 7.2 billion people on the planet and they all still need to buy stuff and look good and stay healthy. I'm thinking of you, Bianca, with your fitness training and buy beautiful art. I'm thinking of Anu who sells art. You know, the world has not stopped. We've just 
been consuming goods and services and products in slightly different ways. And to be honest, we're consuming goods and products in ways that everybody needed to catch up with anyway. I know that for many women in our community, they've been saying, you know, for the last three years, I was talking about going virtual or doing more marketing online or getting my social media act together. And now everyone's just being forced to do that, but it's something we should have done anyway, right? That's why we kept thinking of it. So back to the scarcity versus abundance thinking. So scarcity thinking is like, there's not gonna be enough. Right? So whenever you catch yourself thinking that there's just not enough for me, there's not enough for everyone, um, for me to get mine, someone else can't get theirs, right? That's scarcity thinking and please call yourself on it or have somebody call you on it. And we do have in our programs accountability partners. We assign women accountability partners and that's something that they do for each other as well. So here's what abundance thinking looks like. Um, it can actually be summed up with one quote. There's a Rumi quote I love. I don't know if you follow Rumi, R-U-M-I, the, the philosopher. And he has this quote that I love so much that I have it up on my wall in my apartment in Manhattan, which I'll be back in on Sunday. Woohoo! moving home. And the quote says this. It says, what you seek is seeking you. I had my little philosopher, namaste hands while I said that. Um, all right, so the quote is, what you seek is seeking you. Now, what does that mean to you? What you seek is seeking you. Well, I'll tell you what it means to me. It means to me that every day, millions of women, right? There are 12.8 million women entrepreneurs. Millions of women are waking up, needing help with coaching, wanting to grow their businesses, but not quite sure how to do it wishing they had a coach and a mentor, like I wish I had a coach and a mentor when I was growing my business, Little Pim, but not knowing who to help them with that. Maybe having joined a program, but it didn't work out. And now they realize, whoa, I'm back where I started. So they're seeking, they're waking up every day seeking help. And I'm seeking them because my greatest joy is helping women to grow their businesses. So this is abundance thinking, is focusing on the people who are looking for you. And if you have a business, there are people looking for you because that's why you have a business in the first place. You are solving a problem that many, many people have. And abundance thinking is staying hyper-focused on who has the problem I'm trying to solve and what can I do today to make sure they can find me, right? Because if they're seeking me, then my job is to be findable. And I do that in my own business through writing blogs, through doing CEO live check-ins, through uh, hosting webinars, in the old days, public speaking, I hope to get back to that, writing books, right? This is how people can find me. So how can people find you? How are you creating abundance by just putting so much out there, right, that anybody who's looking can find you? Because by the way, every night I go to sleep right now with like five emails I never got to of people I really care about, but I just can't get to them because there's so much going on. And that's true for a lot of people. So when you're thinking of sending that second email or that third email, just remember they're seeking you. They're just really busy and distracted trying to figure out where am I going to get masks and where am I going to go on vacation this summer and how do I get food into my house this week and did I touch that door and now do I need to go Lysol everything down, right? So make it easy for them. How has the problem I can solve and how do I help people find me? ASDMF5 asks, well, I think we should go live and, and talk about that here. I'm going to send you a little go live request. Abundance mindset, right? Focusing on who is looking for you and not letting yourself go into that scarcity thinking of there's not enough or, you know, there used to be this great economy, but now the economy is terrible. And look, I'm not discounting what's happening out there. You know, we all are watching the news. Well, I'm not watching the news that often um, because I find that it does interrupt my ability to produce content that helps the women I work with. So I watch fairly unoften. But if you are watching, um, I'm still keeping up on the news through my family and through my team. But if you are keeping up, you know that, you know, the death rates are going down, but there's still a lot of deaths out there. There's a lot of suffering. Certainly every time I open up Facebook, I see that another friend's parent has died or somebody else I know has been affected. And it's, it's deeply distressing. But it should not be allowed to interfere with your abundance mindset because you are in charge of staying in that positive state that will allow you to do your best work. And even with what's going on out there, there's still an opportunity for you to share your gifts and services with the world, but you're not gonna do that 
if you're in scarcity mindset. You're only going to do that when you're in abundance mindset. So let's see if there's somebody who wants to go live. A S D M F five. That did not work. So we're going to try somebody else. Um, and I also want to let you guys know that Monday we are going to have a guest here on CEO Check In. Um, Sonia runs a creative branding and digital marketing firm called Ona Creative. They're one of the top boutique firms in LA working with big brands all over the country. And we're going to have her come on and talk to us about what we should be doing with our digital marketing and building our brand during this time. So I'm really excited for that. Oh, I see Karen Sates is on. Hi, Karen. Uh, Karen, you were one of the emails that I didn't get to and I was talking about I go to sleep every night with these emails that I just didn't get to. A dear friend and a mentor in our program, he and his wife are pregnant. I just finally got to write back to him after four days. So let's see, Karen, let's see if you can go live and maybe I can give you some advice right here on the spot instead of uh, having one more email I didn't answer. Hey, Karen, it's so nice to see hey, you. Hey, Julia, how are you? I'm doing really well. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for doing all of these. I've been watching every week. Thank you. It's been nice to see your One name pop up. One of those people up. in the background. What? <laughs> I said, it's been nice to see your name pop up each week. We know each other from EO, Entrepreneurs Organization. Karen has been instrumental in helping EO to have like incredible events. I was in EO for, I think it was seven years and on the board when you were helping with a lot of things, but I don't know what you're up to now. So please tell us. So, well, I've, uh, I've been doing events. And I've spent the last uh, year working on a large project for a large company, along with still working for EO. I, as a matter of fact, I was in Amsterdam until March 6th doing uh, Train the Trainers for EO, which was um, training all of the forum trainers. Oh, so amazing. I'm still doing events, but um, over the last year, I've put together a company called Mastermind X and uh, Mastermind X, um, which is really about... Um, about helping growth companies and helping their teams and putting their teams into mastermind exchanges, a la forums, but not really exactly forums and putting them together. So oh, like a um, peer to peer coaching type situation? Peer to peer coaching, but really I got certified in doing behavioral assessments and, um, you know, able to really look at teams and how they work together because the events that I've been doing, really I've been doing learning programs for 15 to 20 years with speakers. So I really wanted to take that learning deeper into the companies themselves, as opposed to, you know, CEOs come to an event, oh yeah, I really want to do that in my company. And then they walk away and nothing happens. So my goal was to, I created a three part process where I, um, you know, went in, spoke to the companies, did the behavioral assessments, understood what their goals are, and then bring in experts and create experiences around it. So it's experiential learning on the spot. So what people, what you learn. This sounds amazing. People. And is it already launched or are you launching it? Well, now? it's sort of launched, yes. It's sort of launched, okay. I launched okay. it at the Mass Conference for Women in end of December in Boston at the trade show. There were 13,000 women at the conference. Amazing. Did you get so, some signups right there or were you just so kind of getting it I going? Got, I got people, I was offering free behavioral assessments actually, and I got 120 people that wanted to do the assessments. Um, but it was literally the week before Christmas. And when push came to Shum, m none of them did it. And uh, so yeah, it's hard getting I... a new program off the ground, right? Yeah, I think exactly. it took me about three years to get masterclass, like all dialed in. So I, I exactly. feel you. Exactly. So I came back and I was finishing up uh, the two large projects that I was working on for the last year. And I was planning to launch in March, which was <laughs> amazing timing when I was coming back from uh, Europe, or from Amsterdam with EO. And so and then this tiny thing called a pandemic happened. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> well, but how, tell me how I can be helpful today. What's the question so the that you're asking right really now? really geared to be virtual in many ways. Yes. So, um, and I've done five uh, virtual events over the last month for oh, clients you. And, and, you know, whatever. But I think that, you know, pivoting my business to be just a compute, uh, complete virtual online event business. I mean, there's so many event planners that are out there doing it. And, you know, I did write a blog and link, put on LinkedIn and do a whole bunch of things around it because I, you know, I've always done niche programs in the sense that I don't usually do 2,000 people. I do... 500 or 700 or 50, yes you know well, and carol help me understand um or karen sorry karen help me understand what can i be helpful with today right here in live coaching so actually one of my goals is through this mastermind x program not million dollar women not women who are but women who are solo entrepreneurs or part of a team in a corporation 
and need other women to support them. And so to put those mastermind exchanges together with women who are either part of a corporation or who are just out there, they're, maybe they're a realtor and they're a solo, you know, they have their own yeah. business, but they need this. Well, support. let me ask you a question, Karen. So when women join your program, what results do they get? Because one thing we teach a lot in Million Dollar Women Masterclass is when you want to get more signups, right? And when you want to have your program really take off, it's often about getting really crystal clear about what the results are. And Rabia, who's on this call, is laughing right now listening to me because we spent a lot of time talking right. about what's going to happen on the other end. Like she coaches leaders, right? And so she's so good at what she does and people love her, but she hadn't yet totally crystallized what's going to happen for you after you work with me. So why don't you tell me if a woman signed up with you, Karen, and took your program, what would happen in her life after she took it? So my goal is not to be the coach. Um, I, I will moderate some of the groups and have lots of moderators. But when they finish the program, or hopefully they continue the program for a long time, they have a peer group that is supporting them. And monthly, we bring in CEOs, just like you, Julia, or plenty of the women that you actually know, to speak to them and to share their experiences. So the goal for these people are to give them almost like a support group almost like a forum that they don't have. Today. Okay, let's press pause there. So that's a good start, but it's still, you know, vague because it's like support. And, you know, I had a coach, Karen, who said, who drilled into me. He was like, people don't pay for community, especially now with, you know, you've got Facebook, you've got Instagram, you've got all these groups people can join for free. So even though that sounds nice and we're all women and it's like, sure, I'd love to have, you know, a bunch of women I can go to, People pay for results. So let's just drill down a little further. You're on a great track, but let's keep going. So let's say she has this community of sisters, right? And she's got, and she's met with these cool people you've brought in who are experts. Tell me a couple things that could happen in her life, maybe six months after she's done this program with you. So the goal was to have working women, women who are professional, who want to grow their companies. These are for growth minded people, for positive yes. mindsets and growth minded. So the goal is for them to be able to take their company to whatever goals that they want to meet, but they haven't had the support to do that with. Got and it. Now so they, so they, might, they might make more money, right? Is that one thing they could have? more money. They might make more money. Clients. If they work in corporate America, could they maybe like get a promotion or something? They could get a promotion. But, you know, one of the things I found at the conference when I was leading is there were a lot of scientists and women who had to manage teams. And really, they're scientists. They're not managers. They're not people people. Mm. And they, they had no training really, in that. They have no training in that. They didn't understand how they didn't understand their team for starters. Um, so by testing their whole team and understanding the, the nuances of the behavior of their team, they can better lead their team. And so as they're, rising up the, as they're rising up the ladder within their own companies, they need those skills because now they're not just sitting at a bench doing science. They're now leading a team of other scientists. Yes. And that's well, problem. now we're getting somewhere. So my recommendation would be to go after you get off this call and just put at the top of a white sheet of paper outcomes, right? Because sometimes we forget to really market the outcomes of our programs. We get so focused on the how, right? Like when women get on a call with us right. on our team, we spend very little time on the how. Because we figure if you trust us, then we, we've got you on the how. You know, like how many times we're going to meet and how long you're going to spend doing the homework and all that. It's just all details. Like the how isn't what they're paying for. They're paying for the results. So we spend a lot of time, you know, showcasing our successful graduates, talking about how they're going to make more money, talking about how they're going to feel when they know how to, you know, manage their finances, do the right marketing, scale up their businesses. So I'd love to see you make that list of like at least five major things that could be results for your graduates of your program. And then that will start to attract people who want those results and they'll trust you to figure out the how. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Totally. And Karen, I'd love you to share with me, how are you staying in an abundant mindset right now? Were you on at the beginning when I talked about the scarcity I, versus I was, abundance yeah. so, mindset? You know, I was fortunate to take your class down in Florida and I have that vision board that I created that night at Wendy's uh, office and I look at it often. It sits next to me at my desk. Um, I created a resource list actually of all the food delivery services for the community because I, I went out there and I tested them all and I realized how many of my friends just had no idea and were stuck and couldn't get groceries. And I was ordering them and having them come to my back door and having them pick them up at my house. So I created for the community um, a whole 
list of resources, which I did post on my website under resources and also put out there on the Next Door Digest for anyone. That oh, wanted that was so generous of you. I love that. So that was and, so, my, and how, how are you with your business staying in the abundant mindset, especially starting a so brand new business? Five, so I did five virtual events. So right as this happened, I went out there and asked five experts, many of whom you know, um, to actually come on. And uh, we looked at the uh, issues around stress and anxiety, the issue of managing your family at home while you're working. So I started to, to sort of divide and conquer in terms of the things that I felt were important to the people that have been my clients. I and, love that. Uh, so that's another great way of staying in abundance thinking, right? Is to just serve and you know do more for the people who you want to have as your clients. That's a great way to stay in abundance. I love that you did that. So my and goal that, is to continue to do that, but to change the format a little and sort of raise my level of expertise and do some Q&A. And so it's not just actually creating it and providing it and doing all the logistics around it, but at the end of the day, really, you know, to be a participant in it and also to share what I do as opposed to just sharing what they do. Yes, well, I love what you're creating. It sounds really exciting, Karen. And thanks so much for coming on and sharing that. My with pleasure. Us today. And I did send you an email because I do. I would like to chat. I know. I saw. You and I'm going to get to it. <laughs> thanks. For oh, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Julia. Thanks nice to your... see you. Bye, Karen. Nice to see you too. Bye. I'm so glad she mentioned also the. Um, the vision board, that's another great way to stay in abundant thinking. I ran a workshop for about 20 women down in Florida that Karen was at, thanks for reminding me, where we created vision boards. And if you've never made one, it's just an opportunity to put up on a big piece of paper some things that bring you joy, that you wanna have more of in your life, I actually brought mine with me here to Connecticut. I have it right on my wall. I look at it every day. And it just focuses your brain on what are you trying to attract more of, right? This isn't necessarily like law of attraction. Oh, just think it and it'll come to you. It's not that. It's helping to remind your brain that there are things that you want, that you're looking for, so that you're constantly on the lookout for them. And it also just brings you joy when you look at it. So maybe this is time, if you have a little extra time now, home on a lockdown, to create your first vision board. You can just Google it. I think I wrote in one of my blog posts, I believe, is about writing, making a vision board. And if not, I should do one. Um, so yes, that's another great way to keep the abundance thinking going. Thank you for the reminder, Karen. All right, we are going to wrap up soon. Let's just see if there's anybody else who wants to go live today in our last five minutes. Hi, Jay Fitz, NutriFit. Nice to see you. Um, hi, Rabia. Thank you for the shout out. Joyce Crossy, I don't know you, so welcome for welcome to CEO check-in. And if it is your first time joining us, oh, hi, Valencia. If it's your first time joining us, the format is that I always do a bit of mindset teaching and then we do live coaching. And if you want to see some of the former mindset teachings, you can go onto my YouTube channel, which is just Julia Pimsler Coach. And all these CEO check-ins are recorded. So you can watch old ones in between. I'm only going live twice a week now. It's Monday and Wednesday at 12 noon. I do plan to carry on doing this and I'm starting to bring guests on. We're having a guest on Monday who is a brilliant marketer, Sonia from Onya, Ona Creative. And she will be talking about how we should be looking at our branding and our digital marketing during this time. So please make sure to join us on Monday for that. Uh, let's just see, hey Maddie. If anybody wants to go live today, this is a last chance. Send me a little message. And if not, um, I just want to end with the same quote I started with so that you can go off into your day with abundant thinking, which is what you seek is seeking you. So maybe write that down on a post-it or put it somewhere where you can look at it anytime that you're feeling a little bit lost or disorganized. I know that many of us have been feeling like it's harder to focus or you're just really tired. These are all effects of this kind of undercurrent of uncertainty that we're all living with right now. So if you're feeling that way, well, first of all, take a nap. I'm a big believer in the nap and I take a nap almost every day. So if you're feeling like really exhausted, just take a nap and start over. But then when you do start over and you are looking for, okay, how am I going to grow my business today? Maybe start with that question, right? If what I seek is seeking me, then what should I be doing to be more findable? And maybe make a list of 10 things you could be doing. You don't have to do them all at once, right? I talked to Bianca this morning, who's a trainer, and she has a lot of women signing up for her coaching classes, but she's only skimmed the surface. There's so many more people who would love to get 
a trainer right now, right? Summer's coming. We've got the Corona 15. I think I gained my entire Corona 15 on Mother's Day. I ate like everything under the sun that day. And I definitely felt it the next morning when I went running. So um, yeah, how can more people find you, Bianca, right? What are like 10 ways that you can get the word out? Maybe it's through a referral program, which we talked about on one of those CEO, on one of these CEO check-ins. Maybe it's offering one free class so that people can sample what you have to offer. I mean, I'm doing free CEO check Seconds so people can see what it feels like to have a coach and someone who's cheerleading them and bringing them resources and you know see what that feels like. Um, maybe it's creating a webinar where you talk about the virtues of having a trainer. Maybe it's interviewing some of your favorite clients and getting their testimonials and putting those up on social media. Right? You can easily think of 10 things that you could be doing so that more people can find you. And I think if you think of it as like, people are looking for me, how do I make myself more visible? That's somehow more fun and energizing than like, how am I going to market today, right? I need to write a blog. I need to do my social media. Like I have days I wake up and it's like, oh my God, we've got to write the newsletter. We've got to film the video. You know, marketing can be exhausting. There's so many choices and so many things that you could be doing every day. I get that. So maybe just start with this question today. The people who are seeking me, how can I make it easier for them to find me? And don't forget to call yourself out on your scarcity mindset, because as soon as you name it, oops, that was a bad snap. As soon as you name it, it goes away. Manicure, courtesy of my 15-year-old. All right, you guys, it's been great seeing you today. Thanks for joining me for CEO Check-In. And everyone who is new to CEO Check-In, if you want to go watch the old ones, check out Julia Pimsler Coach on YouTube. And reach out to Maddie at juliapim.com. Maddie, maybe just throw in your email if you would like to hear more about any of our programs. We have two programs starting right now, Million Dollar Women Masterclass and Mastermind Gold. And Maddie can set up a time for you to talk to me or someone on our team about those. It's M-A-D-D-Y at juliapim.com. Um, all right, everyone, have an amazing day. And I will see you on Monday with our special guest, Sonia. Take care. Have a good rest of your week. Bye.